new little plane. Let's jump in and take a look. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, we're going to take a look at my new block plane. It's a low angled rabbit plane or rebate plane. It's a Quang Sheng. I bought it from Workshop Heaven. Now, this is not sponsored or paid for. I bought this with my own money. It's a new tool. I just wanted to share it with you guys, give you a look at it. So what we'll do in this video, to give you a quick look at the plane, I'll take you through some of the specs, some of the features of it. I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. We'll check it for flatness. We'll check the build quality on it. And I'll give you a few demonstrations of this plane in action and why I bought a low angle rebate shoulder plane as opposed to like a standard low angle plane. So that's what we're going to do. So I get you in for a close up of the plane, give you a look at the build quality. I'm quite impressed with it so far. So just say that up front. And uh, you know, if you watch my channel that I have a few Quangsheng planes. So I have the number seven, I have the number five, and I also have the Quangsheng Lubin plow plane. And I really like all of them. Uh, that number five now is kind of my go-to plane. So they're really, really well built. They're made in China. Um, they're produced under a couple of different names. So they're Wood River in the United States. They're sometimes called Lubin, sometimes called Quangshen, like I say. And there's a few other different names too, if you Google them. Now, I do know that Workshop Heaven have the Quangsheng planes made to British standard. So that's better than 1.5 tau or 0 0.04 millimeters for flatness on the sole. So we'll check that in this video as well. And like I say, we'll go through the build quality, check the specs, give you a close up of it, give you my impressions of it. So let's jump in and have a look at this plane. Okay, let's just jump in, have a quick look around this plane. Now it comes in a nice little presentation box. It's just a simple plywood box with a sliding lid. Not much to it really, not very fancy. The plane itself, I have to say first impressions when you take it out of the box, it's a nice heavy bit of metal. It's uh, really nicely made. It's uh, really nicely machined. I have no issues with the machining on it. Now, if you guys know your planes, you will recognize what this looks like. It looks exactly like the Lee Nielsen version of the uh, low angled rabbit shoulder plane or rebate shoulder plane, again, depending on what side of the Atlantic you're on, except it doesn't have the knicker on either side. So uh, the, like Neil Nielsen has a pre-knicker on the front just for severing the fibers in front of the blade. So when you're getting in against your shoulders and stuff like that, you can sever those fibers as you're planing out and allows you to get nice clean cuts right into the corner. This doesn't have it, but other than that, it is nearly identical. Brass lever cap, brass front, uh, I suppose, what would you call it? Front tote. On these, I'm not sure the names of all the parts of the plane now, but it's all nicely made. Um, I have no complaints with how anything is machined. Twist it off, have a look. I'll give you a close-up shots of all this stuff now. But uh, like my other Quangsheng stuff, I have to say the machining on it is pretty excellent. The tolerances on it seems to be pretty good and it seems to be really well made. Now, obviously these are half the price of the Lee Nielsen version. That's one of the biggest, I suppose, uh, selling points of these planes. Not everybody can afford to buy it like the Veritas or the Lee Nielsen stuff. So these are a good option to get yourself a really nice quality plane for, you know, made in China, slightly cheaper. But like I say, Workshop Heaven, um, do have them made to British standard. So not everything that comes out of this factory, even though it's called comes from the same factory and it's different names, I don't believe they're all made to the same standard. So make sure and you check that wherever you're buying these planes, whatever name you're buying them under, check what standard they're made to. So, like I say, brass fittings on the top. We've a nice truss wheel on the back here, so your forward and backwards adjuster. The blade, which I'll take out and give you a look at now in a second, is made from T10 carbon steel, and it's hard. It's hardened to RC63. I've already flattened this. I'll give you a look. It took me seconds to flatten it, so the blade comes extremely flat. The sole of the plane is beautifully machined. I don't see any machining marks left on that, and I've I'll tested it for flatness. I will show you that in this video again. We will test this against the sole of Miley Nielsen plane, which I know to be ex um, better than one tail. So we'll put that on this and we'll check this as well. So yeah, there we go. You can see then on the side, we have the holes here. The blade comes out side to side. So it's an edge to edge blade, which allows you to get into the shoulder of uh, on corners. That's why it's called a rebate plane or a rabbiting plane. And you can cut rabbits with, with it, which I will demonstrate for you now in a minute. Again, the mouth is nice and even all the way across the front. I have no complaints with how this is machined. And the sides and the sole are perfectly square with each other, which uh, is very, very important in this type of plane. 
The only thing I don't like about it is the adjustment wheel here for the cap iron, for tightening down the cap iron. It's a little bit narrow and it's kind of hard to catch with the brass cap. It kind of sits wider than the adjustment wheel here on the side, so it's just a little bit fiddly. It's not detrimental, it's just a small little gripe. It's a little bit fiddly. I would like if they made that just a little bit wider so you can get onto it a bit more comfortably. That's all, that's my only issue with it. Other than that, using it, it's not as comfortable as other shoulder planes or yeah, as other shoulder planes because of the uh, holes in the side here. Normally you would have little finger trials in the side just to hold the plane. Um, but this is kind of, you know, you have that kind of sharp edge here where you keep your finger. So it's a little bit, just a little bit less uncomfortable. That's all, not much to it, small grip again. I have to find something to grip about after all. So let me take this plane apart, give you some close up shots of it. We'll take a look at the blade and I'll show you how uh, flat the back of the blade is. We'll put another little edge on it again, and we'll demonstrate this plane in action. Okay, very quickly then, I'm just gonna take this plane apart. So let's loosen our cap iron again. It's a little bit fiddly. It's the only thing I don't like about it. That uh, wheel in there, which I'll show you now, is just slightly narrower than the top part here, which makes it a little bit fiddly. So you can see it sits inside in this, and it's a little bit hard to grab in here. If they just made that just a touch wider, it'd be perfect. But other than that, again, another nicely machined piece. Uh, I don't have too many complaints of that at this price point. I mean, there's not much to criticize there. It works pretty well. It's a nice piece of brass. Here's the blade. So when we're taking this out, you need to just tilt it slightly. Just be careful because like I say, it goes to edge to edge. So the front of the blade has to be wider than the body of the blade. Now, let me see if I can get you a close up of this, if the camera is going to focus for me. Okay, so there you can see the blade itself. Now you can see that's all I had to do to flatten the back of this. So very, very little work. So the blade comes really, really flat. And uh, I've just put a nice little beveled edge on it here. You can see it here. We'll give this a nice little touch up just again. We'll give it a quick hand sharpen. I'll show you how sharp you can actually get this. Uh, it's pretty good steel. Like I say, it's T10 uh, carbon steel and hardened to RC63. So you can see the blade comes extremely flat. That's all I had to do to flatten behind the cutting edge. So there we go, not too bad. Okay, just looking at the plane itself, you can see, I suppose we call this the frog maybe, although it doesn't move forward and backwards. It's the bed of the blade where it sits on, so it's good and flat, no real issues there. And there's our mechanism for moving our blade forwards and backwards. So we have these two studs sit into the back of our plane blade right there. So. You just line these up with this, and that's what moves your blade in and out. So there you go. There's a quick close-up of the plane itself. Now let's get this back together, and we'll test it for flatness. So before we reassemble it, I'm just going to touch up this blade. Just give it a little touch up to sharpen it up. So we're using the Scary Sharp Sharp system, and uh, I'm starting to hand sharpen everything now. Once the primary bevel is set, I've started to hand sharpen everything and it's so much quicker and easier. And you can actually hand sharpen on this scary sharp system, which is great. So just get some hone right on that. Find our primary bevel. We go and just tilt up slightly. It literally takes seconds to put a wicked edge on this blade. Make sure we have a bore all the way across the back, and we do indeed work our way down through the grid. It is literally this quick. There we go, we'll just move on to the polishing grits. And we're done. That's literally all we need to do. And we have a nice consistent edge all the way across, which I'll give you a look at now. Okay, so there's our edge, nice and consistent. So you can be nice and consistent hand sharpening. So you can see the bevel that I've put on it there, consistent the whole way across and literally took seconds with that 3M tape on the flow glass. So let's just test this for how sharp it is. Little paper cut test. Seems to be the thing to do. It's pretty sharp. Okay, let's get this thing back assembled. Now, one thing I will say about um, 
rebate shoulder planes is because you have an open mouth side to side and you have that material removed off the side of the plane you need to be careful that you don't over tension these planes you don't want to put too much tension into that lever cap because like i say it's not as stable as a standard shoulder plane because you have a lot of material removed that so in order to get you to get that blade edge to edge you just bear that in mind you don't want to flex the sole so it's going to get that in there now again and give it a tighten down now we only want to tighten this down a small bit we want like i said we don't want to overdo it we don't want to weld this to the blade there's no need to do that we don't have to do that at all because we don't want to deform the plane in any way shape or form now there we go that's our blade back in place our cap iron is down we just want to tighten that just cinch it down and no more and now let's test this for flatness and then i'll give you a quick look at the plane in action Okay guys, what we're looking at now is my Lee Nielsen um, low angled jack plane. So I know this is an extremely flat surface. We're going to use this as our reference surface. These tools are beautifully made and they are better than one tail. Now, British standard is plus or minus 1.5 tail. That's 0 0.04 of a millimeter of the flatness over the length of the plane. So there shouldn't be any more discrepancy than that. Um, so what we're going to do is just put this on the plane my sole of my Lee Nielsen like that. I have a feeler gauge that is 0 0.05, that's the smallest one I have. And that can't even begin to fit under this plane anywhere. Around the mouth is where you especially want to check. Uh, there's nothing, no gap anywhere there. Around the front, nothing, nothing, nothing the back again it's not even beginning to slip under so 0 0.04 millimeters is british standard the 0 0.05 millimeter can't even begin to slip under so i can re you know i can be pretty confident that it's at british standard which is perfect for a plane um if you do find you get one of these and uh, you have issues with it like workshop heaven stand over these planes they give them a lifetime guarantee so if there's any manufacturing defaults whatsoever they do stand over it and like i say that's pretty good now if i slide the plane out off the edge and i try and slip this in underneath i can't so there's no hollow in the center of this plane either and uh, I think people stress too much about how flat their soles of their planes are. Once they're pretty, that's pretty good. Now, any more than that, you do not need. You're woodworking, you're not building things for NASA. So you can just check, you can take a pencil, scribe it along the line like this, just do a wavy pattern. Run it over a nice flat edge like this with some sandpaper on it. So get, get a really high grit sandpaper, see where you're removing it. If you have a slight hollow in the middle of the plane, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. You will be referencing the front, the back, the sides of the plane, and around the mouth is where you want to be flat. And once it is there, don't spend three days trying to touch up or tune up a plane. Um, like I say, if it's, if it's at British standard, it's good enough. We're not building things to go into outer space. We're woodworking and we're hand tool woodworking at the end of the day. So don't stress too much about it. As long as it's not way off, you will be good to go. And that is pretty bang on in my book. Now, if I had a smaller feeler gauge, I would imagine that this is even better than British standard, but I can't test down that far. So we're at British standard. I can tell you that much. So there we go. Okay, so I can hear some of you guys saying, John, shut up, take some shavings with this plane and show us it in action. Now, I also realize I've been calling this a shoulder plane. It's a block plane, but it's more like a shoulder plane than a block plane. It's more like a rebate plane. Um, you need to think of it in that kind of style. It's not as robust as a, say, a standard block plane. That's what I've been referring to it as a shoulder plane. So you don't want to put too much pressure on this. You don't want to dog the plane too much. Like I say, you have that open mouth and open sides, so you can uh, have a little bit of flex in your sole. So just bear that in mind. But uh, we can take some, some beautiful wispy, wispy shavings with this. So very, very nice. So it is a kind of a nice, versatile block plane. Again, keep in mind that it's more like a shoulder plane, I suppose, than an actual block plane. But uh, yeah, it can still do all the jobs. It's just not going to be as hardy, I suppose, as your standard block plane. So there we go, some nice, beautiful, wispy shavings coming off that now. Really, really nice. 
they are very, very, very fine. And I suppose it does come down to how well you sharpen your blade as well. And it's a pretty decent steel, not the best steel in the world. It's not like A2 or anything like that. But a T10 carbon steel is actually not that bad as a tool steel. And they are some pretty nice shavings. So let me give you a, a demonstration of using this to put a rebate on a piece of wood. And uh, I'll give you some ideas what you can actually use this plane for. Okay, so a quick demonstration of, I suppose, the unique function of a rebate block plane, um, what we can do with it. So let's put a little rebate in this little off coat of ash. We'll use this other piece of ash as a fence. So we'll just get our marking gauge and uh, we'll just pull a line in that. It doesn't have to be a set measurement or anything. This is only for demonstration purposes. So we'll say that's where we want our rebate to be, right there. So what we'll do is we'll line this guy up right with that marking gauge line. I'll bring you guys around now for a, a look. I'll just set this up first. So we bring in here where my uh, hold fast holes are. Line those two pieces up. We'll just do this roughly. Just a rough demonstration. And then we put a little rebate in this. Okay, so you can see our two pieces of ash just have a held in place with a hole fast now. So just a quick demonstration. We're going to use this piece of ash as a fence. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't use a plane like this to cut a rebate, but you absolutely can do it. I know it's called a rebate block plane, but you're better off using a dedicated rebate plane or a plow plane for doing things like this um, and using these for like cleaning up tenons and shoulders on certain joints and stuff like that. That's where these things excel. And they also are pretty good as little block planes as well. So. This is why it's important that we have our walls, um, our sides perfectly square to our sole because we're using our, this side as a reference against our fence and we're just going to work this rebate into this piece of wood. We just put a small rebate in, again it's only for demonstration purposes, just to show you one of the things you can actually do with this plane. Okay, I'll give you a quick look at this. Okay, there's our piece of ash. We've just put a very, very small rebate in this just for demonstration purposes. So if the camera will stay focused, there we go. So you can just see, there we go, just a little rebate in that piece of timber. And I'll show you another little demonstration that we can do a similar thing that I noticed Rob Cosman does a lot with his pins for his dovetails. Okay, so another little similar thing that we've just done. Um, I often see Rob Cosman doing this. I think it's a great idea. So he takes a little cut over the inside of his pin board for his dovetails. And you can use that as a reference then against when you're marking your tails on top of your, or marking out your pins from your tails, I should say. So we just set that. So imagine this is my dovetails and this is my pin board here. And I want to put these two together. So I'm just going to scribe my line on this as if I'm marking out my pins, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is do exactly what we've just done. I'm going to line this piece up right at my pin line, where that marking gauge line is now. And we're going to take a little shot with the rebate plane there. Uh, just the barest one or two passes, that's all we need, a slight little touch of a rebate and then we can use that to reference against this, it will hold it in place. It will also hide the inside of the joint, so if you have any gaps in your tails on the inside of the joint where you can sometimes see holes in here on your dovetail joints, it'll help hide that as well. So let me just set this up again, we'll take a couple of passes and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so just very quickly, there's my marking gauge line, so that's where my pins need to stop. So I'm going to line that guy up on top of that, just roughly. Again, we're just doing this for demonstration purposes, so right there, get him like that. Now, if you have like a skew block plane with the fence on it, um, ideal, or if you have like a plow plane or something with a wide enough blade and a fence on it, you can do that as well. But this is just show you how versatile this little plane is. It will do all these jobs for you. So, as we don't have a fence on our plane, we want to make sure that the fence we line up is good. And then we just take a couple of passes, 
Not many now. It's only just, just enough. Okay, that's perfect. We don't want to do too much. Now what that's given us is just the barest lip there that we can use to reference against this piece of timber like this, which I'll show you now. Okay, so this is where this comes in really useful. Now this is actually our tail board, not our pin board. I know I said pin board, but we actually put this little rebate into the tail board. So we have just the barest little shoulder here. It is only the tiniest little bit and it's on the inside of our joint. Hopefully you can see that line on camera. And what it allows us to do is to reference this piece against this. So you can see that is now catching our pin board. So you can put that right up against that. It catches right on the edge. It lines this edge perfectly up with this edge. It keeps everything nice and stable for when you're marking out your pins from your tails. And it's just a nice little detail. Again, it's Rob Cosman, he does this, so I don't wanna claim any credit for this idea. That's who I've seen doing it. I think it's just a great little idea. And it's also a way of just having, um, hiding the inside of your joint so that the pin board sits into the tail board that little bit better. So you get a nice clean line as well on the inside of your joint right here. So there you go, that's just a little, another use for this plane. So another little thing we can do, using it more as a block plane, is just putting little decorative chamfered edges on pieces. That's where block planes really excel, is for doing this small little detailed work. Or your standard like smoothing planes and number fives and stuff are just a little bit cumbersome. So if you want to put a little chamfer in the edge of a piece of timber, you can absolutely do that. And this will work as a block plane as well. But just remember, it's not as robust as your standard block plane. There we go. Just a nice little decorative edge in our piece. Now a couple of more uses for these things. Obviously getting in against your shoulder or cleaning up tenons, these are perfect because like that, I say that blade goes edge to edge so it allows you to get right into your shoulder. And doing things like getting in against the corner, if you need to plane your piece right into the corner, you can absolutely do that with this type of block plane. That's, uh, that's why I got it, it does all those little jobs and it's very, very handy. And like I say, you can use it, I know it's called a rebate plane or a rabbit plane, but rabbiting or rebating with these things, although it is possible, is not ideal, but like I said, you can do it. And doing that little trick that Rob Cosman uses, these are ideal for doing that as well. And they work really well as a nice little block plane, as long as you don't abuse it too much. So there you go. Okay guys, so there we go. That is my new Quang Sheng block plane, my low angle rebate block plane or rabbiting block plane. Hopefully you've enjoyed that one guys. Hopefully you've got something out of it. Hopefully it gives you a few ideas. Now if you're in the market for one of these type of planes, I highly recommend them. As you've seen, as I demonstrated to you now, they're really nicely made. I've yet to have any issues with the Quang Sheng stuff. I have a bunch of that stuff already. Again, I, which I bought all these from Workshop Heaven. Spent my own money on these. It's not sponsored. They weren't sent to me or anything like that. Um, they are made to British standard, as I've demonstrated. Now, unfortunately, uh, Workshop Heaven can't sell Quang Sheng to the United States because there's a licensing agreement. I think they can only be sold as Wood River over there. So that's, if you can see a Wood River version of this over there, definitely look into it. Um, check to make sure that they're made to the same tolerances. I don't have that information for you now in this video, guys. These come out of the one factory and they come out of, uh, with several different names on them. But I do know the Quang Sheng that goes to Workshop Heaven is made to British standard as I've demonstrated. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you're in Ireland and you want to get your hands on some of these, or if you're anywhere in Europe and you want to buy from Workshop Heaven, um, I didn't have any issues with Brexit after taking place. I put it in order to Workshop Heaven. Um, they, you don't pay the VAT there. You pay the VAT on your side and there doesn't seem to be any issue. The couriers just charge you, you the VAT, you pay them and uh, there was no import duty or anything like that, but make sure you check wherever you are in the world. That's the kind of situation we are in at the minute, but I ordered it on a Monday. It arrived at my front door on a Wednesday from the UK, so that's great. As always, Workshop Heaven give you great service. I'm not paid, I'm not sponsored to say this. It's just where I happen to spend my money, and it's some good tools, and they're well-priced, so there you go. 
They're not as nicely made as the Lion Nielsen, but they're not as expensive. They're not as nice as the Veritas. Again, not as expensive, but they are a step above the Stanley and all that. So if you want to get yourself some nice hand tools, definitely think about the Quarren Shank planes. Have a look, see what you think yourself. And uh, that's it, guys. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed that one, guys. Hopefully it gives you a few ideas and a bit of inspiration. As always, if you liked it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Be Feel free to share it. Any comments you have for me, any questions, any information you have about these planes, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'm always interested to hear your take on things too, guys. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's my new block plane, not a shoulder plane, a block plane, but it's like a shoulder plane for all the world. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.